Mixing with my mixing tip, how to anchor the bass in a mix. One of the most difficult things that people have in understanding uh, uh, a mix is how to work with the low frequencies. And nothing occupies more low end on a consistent RMS basis than does the bass um, in any given track. So when you're working with the bass, getting it to sort of be the anchor of the song or the foundation of the song is really important. And when you use those terms, anchor and foundation, I think they're really critical because what they talk about is something that doesn't move, a solid structure from which everything bounces off of. And I think what happens with most people's approaches to low end and in particular basses is that they're always trying to make it image well with the drums. And so they have the drums keying it and pushing it and doing all these different things. And what you're doing is the exact opposite of what you really want from a good solid bass sound. So the idea then is that when you're working with the bass sound, you really want it to stay pretty stable and stationary so that all of the other things in the mix kind of can play off of it and move off of it. So when I talk about stationary, I'm not talking about the performance because the performance of the bass can actually play all kinds of notes, all kinds of rhythms, at all different varied areas in terms of you know what strings they're playing on high and low and all this sort of stuff and still be like a foundational solid instrument so you hear this a lot you know with with old time classic records because a lot of those records have this really really rich wonderful warmth on the low end that just seems to image so solidly and i want to explain why this happens now when you're working with actual um uh, when you think about like getting things to image well, you have to think about our binaural hearing and the way that we hear. It's so important so that when we deal with um, what we can localize, right, in our binaural hearing, um, everything is about localization. So in the frequency response area of the human voice, approximately like 80 cycles up to maybe 6K or so, we get, we are imaging, our sense of imaging is very good. And when you go to frequencies above that and below that, then our ability to find something that's purely in that frequency range and locate it quickly and easily becomes more and more difficult. And so the last thing you want with a bass is to take something that doesn't image well and make it move around and flop around a lot more. So I'm going to show you some techniques for how to make it solid. Um, one is, uh, and, and you've seen me use this this technique or or this type of compressor a lot i really love this uh compressor because it's so simple this is just like a simple technique which adds solidity very low ratio very low threshold this is what i call like a tonal balancing kind of thing and what i want to do here is i'm going to take this and uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate these basic settings and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a uh, i have a base group here and i'm going to modify it here so this is something uh, that is an HD feature here. So I'm going to have it, um, all of my basic controls here, I'm going to link them. So when I make changes of settings on one, it's going to be applied to both of them. And then we'll be able to kind of see the results. So I can um, uh, make my settings kind of identical on both sides. So that's all I'm doing here on this end. And so this way, if we see like the other base, So what you see here is I have a very fast attack, fast release, and a low threshold. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to kind of balance this out and make it more even. So as this is up higher, you can hear how there's like more variation, like the buzziness kind of comes out a bit more. As I go lower in threshold, you'll notice how the tone becomes more solid. The movement from note to note is less radical. So just kind of notice the unevenness of it. to let it breathe a little bit more here. Mm -hmm. 
So I just want, to, want you to hear this in the track, just so you can get a sense of what this is. And this is... Without it. So notice just like if I take out, like we just, just drums and bass. Notice how much punchier the drums are with it in as opposed to without it. So it's like, so what we have here is now something that kind of solidifies it. Now, when you work with, um, when you work also with this, there's another plugin that I'm going to use here, which I think is, is really amazing for not the Shep 73 necessarily, but uh, the 1073 in particular. And again, I'm going to have a little bit of a, a deja vu thing here. Right, so we're going to have all over again. So we can see the settings here. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to warm up the top end. Like another mistake. So this is a 12K shelf. And I'm going to do like the forbidden thing. I'm going to add low end to the bass. And what's so amazing about this um, particular um, EQ, it's like almost perfectly suited because it's a transformer-based um, compressor. Like it's, it's known for its transformers. And the transformers are really amazing at giving you like solid, really dense low and low mid frequency energy, which is what's really, really cool with this. So I'm gonna give it a slight boost here. And I'm also gonna do something that's also very important. And that is bringing up something in the upper harmonic. So usually somewhere in the six to 800 area, if I bring out a little bit of that, it'll bring in the note. So I'm warming up the top because this edginess on the top actually makes the bass less distinguishable. Right, so you could hear the solidity that that kind of brings into the sound of the bass. So if you set up the drums correctly and you kind of work with them well and you kind of make sure that you leave open, you know, especially low mid energy, really focus the fundamental frequencies of the individual elements of the drum kit, you create this open area that the bass can really sit very nicely in. So now this is this is going to come up a little bit high so I'm going to just back this off so balance out the gain Now another classic way to to kind of even this out uh, is to use an LA2A So one of the things that is this and this is going to balance off what I've done with the very fast attack fast release. This is a limiter. Uh, you know, we set it to compressor limit mode. Basically, what you're getting is a um, is a limiter. And the way that this uh, limiter kind of works here, and I can actually go with either setting, but they're I was just doing that to show you that they they kind of both work together. The idea there is what we have is like a fast attack and a slow release. And this is a great way of helping to smooth out or level out the sound of the bass. So what we're doing is we're cementing the bass into a place so the rest of the drums can kind of anchor and the rest of the instruments can kind of anchor and bounce off of it. So usually what I'll do here is I'm going to kind of tweak this up just a little bit. 
Uh, that's just uh, filtering, so it's leaning a little bit more towards the high frequencies driving. I'm going to need to see both of these guys because like one of these guys may not balance out the same way. this to so one of the cool things about optical components is their slow characteristic a very musical release kind of characteristic that has like a nice smooth evening kind of quality and it also helps this the bass in particular to image incredibly well so So let's bring in some other keys in here. Now the bass is like a nice solid anchor in the track and all the keyboards, guitars, drums, image and kind of move dance like around it right so now let's listen to the same thing without so when you listen to this there's no foundation the tendency is to want to push the bass up and then it just makes everything muddy There you have it. There's our uh, mixed tip of the week, just to give you like, um, you know, like an idea of how you can really, really create, get a lot of low end, rich warmth by anchoring the bass in the mix. And that's just like a simple, basic uh, technique, just those three little elements there. And you can add others to help kind of, uh, you know, give you that solid foundation that you could build the rest of your mix off of. Mixing with Mike, mixing tip, how to anchor the bass in the mix.